Imagine you have a missile designed to combat a specific threat that is the enemy radar systems. Well, that's what an anti-radiation missile does. You see, radar systems work by emitting electromagnetic signals, and they help the enemy detect and track targets like aircraft, vehicles, or even ships. Now, an anti-radiation missile is built to home in on those radar signals. And DRDO's Ridrum is one such missile. When it's launched, it doesn't carry a regular explosive warhead like most missiles. Instead, it's equipped with a pre-fragmented warhead and with an optical proximity fuse that enhances its effectiveness against targets. A pre-fragmented warhead is specifically designed to create a large number of smaller fragments or submunitions before it reaches the target. These fragments are like tiny, high-speed bullets that spread out in a wide pattern upon detonation. The idea behind a pre-fragmented warhead is to increase the area of effect and the chances of hitting the target by saturating a larger volume of space. The pre-fragmented warhead is essentially like a shotgun blast, scattering a hail of smaller projectiles over a wider area increasing the likelihood of hitting and damaging the target. It's often used in missiles designed for anti-personnel or area denial purposes or causing casualties or disabling a large number of targets in a given area. Earlier anti-radiation missiles, like the AGM-45 Shrike, weren't very smart, they just home in on the radiation source and blow up when they got close. When an anti-radiation missile like AGM-45 was first launched at them, SAM operators learned to disable their radar and then reactivate it, considerably decreasing the weapon's efficacy. However, modern anti-radiation missiles like the DRDO Ridrum-2 missiles have advanced inertial guidance systems and two-way data link combined with global positioning system and NAVIC satellite guidance. This allows them to remember the radar's direction even if it is turned off and continue to fly towards it, increasing their effectiveness against SAM operators who attempt to turn their radars off to evade the missile. The Ridrum is equipped with a millimeter wave seeker transmitting on frequencies of 30 gigahertz and above equipped with a passive homing head infrared imaging seeker designed to neutralize radar installations with utmost accuracy. The Ridrum missile is equipped with a dual-pulse rocket motor. This design overcomes the limitation of traditional solid propellant rocket motors, which cannot be readily shut down and restarted. How does a dual-pulse rocket motor works? The first stage lights up and the rocket moves forward with a fairly strong push. During this phase, a large amount of the propellant is used up quickly, which gives the rocket a speed boost. After the first stage, there is a short time when the rocket moves without any force. This is called the coasting phase. During this time, the rocket keeps moving forward with the momentum from the first pulse, but it saves the rest of its fuel for the next step. The second stage lights up, giving the rocket another push, though not as much as the first. This extra force increases the rocket's range, makes it easier to control, or lets it hit targets at different distances more successfully. By dividing the propellant into two stages, a dual-pulse rocket motor can achieve greater overall range compared to a solid propellant motor with the same amount of propellant. The primary objective of the Ridrum-1 missile is to suppress enemy air defenses, such as X-band ground-based shore ads. This entails destroying adversary communication systems and surveillance radar stations with a range of approximately 250 kilometers and a maximum speed of 2 Mach, or twice the speed of sound. While Ridrum-2 
is also designed to neutralize the L-band and S-band gap filler radars of medium-range SAM systems with an operational range of 350 kilometers and speed of Mach 5.5 and Vridrum 3, with a range of 550 kilometers, designed to destroy low-band, long-range airspace surveillance radars. These missiles are all versatile, suitable for targeting airstrips, bunkers, and aircraft hangars. This versatility enhances the missile's utility in different combat scenarios. The missiles can be launched from India's Su-30 MKI and Mirage 2000 fighter jets, However, if the missiles could be integrated in a UCAVs like India's Heron TP, Predator drones, or even the Tapas drones, by reducing the weight of the missile, then it could be very deadly weapon for the Indian armed forces. This would allow India's fighter jets to avoid taking the risks that are associated with launching the missiles.